My name is Anita Ellis, and I'm the director of Off-Campus Living and Commuter Student Services. I'm here to welcome you to the live internet chat for the working student about internships. I'd like to thank the Career Senator for taking the lead, and they will be your host for this presentation. I wanted to let you know where our office is located. We're located in the Student Center in room 221 Student Center. Um, our office is open 9 to 5, and also right now we're working on creating a lounge just for you. Again, when we sent out those surveys, we wanted to know what you wanted. Now we're presenting to you our internet chat about internships, and soon we'll be introducing the lounge in 221 that will be able to be accessed from 8 a.m. in the morning to 11 p.m. in the evening. So stay tuned, and thanks again. Hello. I'm Suzanne Dagger, Director of Career Services at Hofstra University. We are very excited to welcome you to our webinar for the commuting student on internships. Today I will be joined by Chandra Daniels from the Career Center. Many of you have submitted questions already, so let's get started. Our first question is from Scott, and he's from Wontaw, and he asks, uh, do employers really think internships are important? He says, I work at in an insurance company part-time and feel that my experience there is great and I have learned a lot. I would hate to quit. It's a great question, Scott. Um, let's start from the beginning. Do employers really think internships are important? And they do. Um, when you're looking for a full-time job after graduation, you're going to find that many employers are looking for either internships or related job experience. Um, internships specifically are important because if it's a true internship, um, employers have taught you something. It's an educational experience. So when you're looking for that full-time job, those employers are going to say, oh, he must have learned something from that internship. They're going to assume that you are prepared for the job at hand. So internships are important. And um, another reason that employers really value them is they don't have to train you as much. Um, they're going to assume that there's a knowledge base already there. Now specifically for you, Scott, you're working part-time at an insurance company. That's, that's wonderful. And you should stick with it, especially if it's going to be related to your work uh, after graduation. Um, if you feel that it's not related at all, there's no transferable skills to what you are going to pursue, then I would encourage you to start thinking about maybe transitioning into more of a related internship experience. But uh, being that you're at an insurance company, we can assume that you're going to be using a lot of quantitative skills, you're using a lot of communication skills, maybe some teamwork skills, um, all transferable to any potential job that you might be pursuing after graduation. Okay, our next question uh, is from Brandon from Roslyn, and he asks, I work while going to school, and I am considering graduate school. Is an internship necessary? Um, Brandon, I actually, in my opinion, would say it is necessary uh, for a few reasons. One is an internship is going to hopefully be related to what you're going to school for, uh, for, for graduate school. And it may confirm that you're going on the right path, that you've actually made the right decision to pursue the right degree um, for graduate school. Um, if it doesn't confirm that, then you may reconsider your graduate school plan. So I think from a decision-making standpoint, an internship is a great way to explore if a graduate degree is the right choice. Um, another reason that I think an internship is important is it's going to enhance your graduate school application. And graduate schools are going to be looking for the best candidates. And those that have done some type of internship or related work experience are going to have a better, better shot at getting into graduate school, especially for a competitive program. Okay. Um, our next question is from Lauren, and she's from Syracuse. And she asks, um, I keep hearing that internships are important. I have worked for my mom for the last few summers. Can I put this on my resume and can I call it an internship? Okay, Lauren, excellent question. This happens a lot um, with our students. They come into our office at the Career Center all the time. Uh, with these sorts of um, situations. Um, it's wonderful that you've worked for your mom, and I'm sure you've learned a lot. 
and you can absolutely put this on your resume, whether you got paid or not. But what you can't do is call it an internship unless it was officially an internship with your mom's company. So yes, you can list this job uh, experience on your resume. Um, you know, maybe you were a part-time office assistant and you certainly can list all the things that you've done at that job, but I would be hesitant to call it an internship unless it truly was um, classified as that for your mom's company. Okay, next question is from Mary Ann and she's from Hempstead and she asks, I have a job in my dad's construction business, okay, similar to our last question. I have a job in my dad's construction business doing accounts receivables and payables. Is this good enough for an accounting job? Okay, Marianne, so I'm assuming what you mean is after graduation you want to pursue um, accounting as a career. Um, and is your dad's uh, business or the job that you're doing for your dad, doing accounts receivable and payables, um, going to qualify you for some type of um, job after graduation in accounting? It definitely will help. I think that um, it's, it's definitely something that will help your resume along. It's going to um, show an accounting firm that you do have related skills and qualifications. Um, however, if you could fit in a more formal internship with an accounting firm, I think that will suit you better in the long run for your um, job um, your job seeking. Um, again, the work that you're doing for your dad is great, and if that's all that you can do, it will definitely help. Um, but certainly a more formal internship with an accounting firm would be best. Okay. Our next question is from Lewis, and he's from Long Beach, and he asks, I have worked at a retail store at the mall for three years and cannot afford to give it up. I have been given a lot of high-level responsibilities. How can I market this to an employer? Um, first of all, I want to just say to our commuting population, we understand that most of our commuters are working, and many of you are working to pay your bills while you're going to school. So paying your bills and keeping your jobs are very important, and in no way would I recommend um, giving that up. Um, so for Lewis, it sounds like he cannot afford to give up his job um, that he's been doing at the mall. Um, I think it's incredibly um, important that Lewis, um, you put on your resume some of these high level responsibilities. Um, and certainly you can say that you've been granted um, management responsibilities on your resume. You can literally write that on the resume. Um, how can you market this job to an employer? Talk about those teamwork skills. Talk about that you've been entrusted to handle money and opening and closing the store. Don't focus so much on the folding of the clothes. Um, talk about training others. Uh, those are all important skills that any employer in any industry are going to find um, valuable. Okay. Next question is from Beth uh, from Middle Island, and she asks, I am thinking about going to school to be a physical therapist. Great. Uh, right now I work as a receptionist at a doctor's office. Will a graduate school see this as related? Um, they will see it as related. They'll definitely think that it's great that you've been working within the healthcare industry. I think that it's important when you're applying to graduate school for physical therapy that you write down maybe some things that you've gotten familiar with, whether it's medical billing, working with patients, talking to them on the phone, answering their questions. Um, maybe you've been setting appointments. Those are all related um, no, uh, skill and skills and certainly will show that you have a, a good knowledge base. However, if you could find some time, type of part-time work, volunteering even, within a physical therapist's office, not only will it help your graduate school application, but it will again verify if you have made the right choice for a career path. It's always important when going to graduate school that you have an opportunity to experience that career at some level before you make that big commitment to go to graduate school. Okay, next question is from Allison, and she's from Union, Uniondale, and she asks, are interviews difficult for internships? This is a great question, Allison. I think a lot of our students 
underestimate uh, the interview process for internships. They don't necessarily take it uh, as seriously as they should. Um, in my opinion, this is your first real interview. This is your first practical experience interviewing, and you should treat it like you're interviewing for a job. Um, so are they difficult? I think it depends on the industry. Um, I would go into the interview assuming that it's going to be difficult. Don't underestimate it and think that it's going to be easy. As nice as that person might be on the phone when they schedule that interview uh, time with you, when you get there it might be a lot more of a um, uh, stricter sort of process. Um, so you want to prepare. I would definitely recommend that you come to an interviewing workshop at the Career Center or watch one of our um, web shops on Blackboard in order to prepare for that interview. You can also make an appointment at the Career Center for a mock interview with a counselor and we will practice with you. Um, and lastly, on our website, hofstra.edu slash career, we have interview questions in our career planning handbook, which you can open up as a PDF file. Okay, next question. Rodrigo from New York asks, um, I, I am working as a waiter. I would love an internship in marketing. I just can't do one right now. What can I tell a future employer? Well, Rodrigo, I'm going to make some assumptions because many of our students, again, are, are in this um, situation. I'm assuming that you can't do an internship because you're working. Um, and I think that that is something that you need to let the employer know, perhaps in a cover letter, letting them know that you're working you know, 20, 30, 40 hours a week as a waiter while you're paying your way in school. Um, and then again, focusing on those transferable skills, letting them know that, okay, yes, you weren't doing a marketing internship, but maybe you were marketing the food at the restaurant. You were marketing the services of the restaurant. You were um, trying to sell um, more beverages or more food products to the to the customer to increase sales um, in addition to all those other transferable skills like working as part of a team, working in a fast-paced environment. Those are all things that we can help you with at the Career Center to try and um, increase your marketability on your resume. Okay, Jesse from, from Bay Ridge asks, I need to find a paid internship. Can I also receive credit? Yes, Jesse, you can. Um, these are harder to find, but they're definitely out there. Let's, let, let me explain a few things. Um, there are three types of internships. Um, there are internships where you can receive academic credit. There are internships where you can get paid. Um, and then there are internships where you don't get paid and you don't receive credit. So what you're asking for is sort of like a conglomeration of two, where you receive academic credit and you get paid. In order to receive academic credit, you need to um, find an internship that is relatable to your major. You then need to work with your department, your, your major department, and see if they will approve it for academic credit. And essentially what that means is you're taking a class. You're paying tuition to take, um, to take an internship. Um, and then that your department will work with that employer, make sure that it's an educational experience, make sure that you're not just running errands, that you're actually learning something. You may have to keep a journal, you may have to do a few, few um, papers, um, and then you will be earning credit. So Jesse, what you're looking for is not only that internship where you're going to be getting credit, but where the internship also says maybe they'll give you some type of stipend or hourly pay on top of it. Um, these certainly can be found. Um, I would suggest um, for all of you out there, including Jesse, to be using um, Hofstra's Pride Career Management System, which is on the portal under My Apps. And all students have access to this. This is where we post thousands of jobs and internships every year. Um, this is where you'll find the bulk of the internships coming through. We also have on Pride CMS a link for internships.com. 
and this is just to enhance the amount of opportunities um, that you might investigate and find a paid internship as well as internships for credit. So for further guidance on that, I would absolutely uh, recommend that you come to the Career Center or give us a call and we can um, counsel you a little bit more on what's out there. Okay, our next question is from James and he's from New Jersey. And he asks, how much do employers pay for interns? I am debating if financially it is worth doing an, in an internship. Um, James, if, um, if financially um, you can afford to do an internship, no matter what, I would recommend that it's worth doing an internship. Um, the, the benefits that you will get from doing an internship far outweigh you know, a dollar here or a dollar there. Um, you have to imagine that after graduation, students who do internships are in a much better um, place to find full-time employment. Um, mo uh, the vast majority of our students who do an internship while in college get hired um, from the employers who they do their internships with and or with another employer. Um, so it is definitely worth doing an internship. Now how much you get paid really depends on the employer, really depends on the industry. Um, certainly uh, industries like engineering or even accounting or computer programming, those may pay higher um, than let's say an internship with a nonprofit organization. Um, but typically you'll find anywhere from uh, minimum a uh, minimum pay wage you know about seven eight dollars an hour all the way up to I've seen twenty twenty five dollars um, an hour so again it all depends on the employer the smaller the employer um, more likely the pay will be lower um, but don't let that hold you back from pursuing something you really love and pursuing something that you think will get you um, you know, put you in a better advantage of getting a job for after graduation. Okay, um, we're going to take a break now. Um, I want to thank you for all those great questions. Keep writing in. Um, after the break, we're going to be joined by Chandra Daniels, the Assistant Director of the Career Center. The break will be short, so hang in there. Hello, I'm Chandra Daniels, Assistant Director for Employer Relations at the Career Center, and we will be continuing our discussion on internships. Victoria, sophomore forensic science major, asks, what year can you start doing internships? Victoria, that's a great question. You can start as early as your freshman year. We like to tell students to get involved in their academics and kind of get situated in the college setting. So they usually start sophomore year, but any time you start your college career would be the best time to start an internship. Adele Mustafa, sophomore business major, asks, what is the first kind of internship you should get? Well, the first type of internship you should get should usually be something within your major, something that you can feel acclimated to um, with an employer that you know that you can work several hours with to begin learning the work culture process. Danielle from Franklin Square asks, what can students do to make it easier to get an internship? Do extracurricular activities play a role in who gets an internship? Well, this question is two-part, so let's start with the first one. What can students do to make it easier to get an internship? First, come to the Career Center. See the opp opportunities that are available on our prior CMS systems so you can see the jobs that are coming in regularly for students. Secondly, do extracurricular activities play a role in who gets an internship? Not necessarily, but what they can do is offer you the opportunities to be available to employers who might have something uh, that is situated for you. So if you are playing in a band, if you are doing sports, you might be exposed to different type of opportunities that might help you get an internship. Jerry from Long Beach asks, what is the best way to apply for an internship? You can't help but using the Career Center Prize CMS system. We have over 4,000 jobs posted. You can go on daily. Uh, employers post every day. And so there are jobs waiting there for you, even right now. Rochelle from College Park asks, as a commuter student and someone that also needs to work, how necessary is it to have one internship, let alone multiple? Rochelle, it's very important to have an internship. Studies show and, and 
the NACE uh, employers have shown that it's very important for students who have internships are more likely to get employed after college because they have work experience. Having an internship gives you experience with work. It gives you real life, real world experience. Do you need to have multiple because you're a community student? If you can fit it in your schedule, life is about balance. So don't overdo. Do just enough that will help you get that next experience to help you get a job when you graduate. Lisa from Queens asks, can I receive credit for an internship at my current job? Well, the thing is, is that you need to go speak to an employer to see if your current job will allow you to turn it into an internship status. I would speak to my coordinator, who is your, for your major, and find out if the job qualifies as an internship to receive credit. Stacy Van Lindbrook asks, where is, your job where is your entire job listing sites? Well, our job listing site is listed on the PRI CMS system. You can go to your portal, go check my, my Hofstra. Within your My Hofstra application, there's a PRI CMS system box. Click that box, and I'll bring you right to our job posting listing where we have over 4,000 jobs posted. Samantha from Quorum asks, I recently got an internship offer, but it's unpaid. I would love to work at this magazine. However, I need money. What can I do? Well, Samantha, the experience is reward enough. If you can secure that internship, although you need money, try to get the job for experience. Speak to an employer. See if you can ask for a stipend or allowance to take you to and from. But if this internship is something that would really help you learn experience on the job for what you do, I would definitely try to speak to the employer to see if you can work out a stipend or salary. Keisha from Uniondale asks, I'm confused. A lot of internships say that they are for credit only. What does this mean? Credit only means that you have to speak to the university to find out how you can apply for an internship. And what you can do is speak to our internship coordinator at the Career Center who will direct you to the right appropriate person in your department. And what will happen is, is a, uh, the internship coordinator will speak to your employer once you find out what the job is and you can definitely find out if you'll be able to obtain credits from Hofstra University. Letitia from Hoboken asks, how many students actually get jobs at the employers? How many students actually get jobs at the employers they intern with? Letitia, getting an internship is the first priority. I don't know how many jobs students receive after they've done internships, but what I like to tell them is that an internship is what it is. It's not an employment opportunity, but it is a way to get experience. And so if you're looking for experience, that is your best bet, is to secure the internship for experience. Speak to the employee and find out if there are any employment opportunities after your internship is done. If they are, please, please apply to the employee accordingly, and they can let you know how to follow up and far, as far as being hired. Sally from Hempstead asks, I heard about OCR. Can I get an internship from that? OCR is on-campus recruitment. And yes, if you participate in our on-campus recruitment program that is happening right now, you can definitely be assured that you can try to be secured into an internship with the Korean Center. On-campus recruitment is the best way to meet employers who come to the university to interview Hofstra students for opportunities they have available in the area. Tom from Melville asks, Many internships are located in New York City. Can I ask employees for travel expenses? What is the stipend versus an hour salary, hourly salary? Many internships, yes, are located in New York City. And you can ask employees for travel expenses. And what you can say to them is that you need uh, allowance to get from Long Island to New York, and you can discuss this in your interview. What is the stipend versus an hourly salary? Well, a stipend is a salary, but it's a type of salary given as an allowance or a benefit for, for someone who's uh, interning or an assistant. Alex from Uniondale asks, what qualifications are employees looking for an intern candidate? Well. The biggest qualifications they're looking for are your communication skills. How well can you write? How well can you interpret written communication? How well can you speak up for yourself and speak to the employer about the needs for the job that needs to get done? You also want to be able to find out what's available in your major that you can transfer the transferable skills that are available to you. Employers are looking for students who are willing to work, who are willing to learn, and who are willing to get the job done. Mary from Glen Cove asks, if I volunteer at a synagogue or church, does that count as an internship? Well, Mary, that's a great question. You can definitely try to ask the, the, the 
people who work at the synagogue or church if this is an internship type position, or you can definitely list it as a volunteer experience on your resume. Please do not hesitate to continue to work in your community as any type of work experience gives you opportunities to learn how to be in the work culture. George asks, there's a communication career next Friday. What do I wear? How many resumes should I bring? George, so glad you brought this up. The communication fair, yes, is next Friday, and you definitely should be dressed a business professional. Suit and tie, shine shoes, and a great smile. How many resumes should you bring? You should bring at least 50 to 100 because you can be able to give out your resumes to uh, employers who are interested in speaking with you further. Shanita from the Bronx asks, when do internships take place? How long does an internship last? Internships takes place all day long. You can speak to your employer about your schedule, especially since you have classes, and find out what schedule is best for you and the employer. Usually they have it posted on their listing. How long does an internship last? It can last from either two weeks to over the course of a semester or up to a year. It depends on what the employer is looking for. Vanessa from Brooklyn asks, many internships offer credit for salary. Who gives me credit for my internships, Hofstra or the employer? Well, the credits come from Hofstra University. You'll have to register for the class and speak to your internship coordinator in regards to how to have that implied. But you definitely have to speak to your employer to find out how, what paperwork is necessary to give to the university to approve. Daryl from Levittown asks, I will be graduating soon, and I'm thinking about attending graduate school. Should I still apply for an internship? Of course, Daryl. Any opportunity you have to apply for an internship is a great reward for you. If you're going to graduate school, you can list this on your resume because you, be, you will have to apply to graduate school, but you'll be able to show them that you have some work experience, which will be more beneficial to you in the long run. Well, this concludes our live chat. Thank you again for joining us and for all your great questions. If you'd like to continue this conversation, please call us at 463-6060 to make an appointment to meet with the counselor. Or stop by for quick question hours Monday through Thursday from 2 to 4, Fridays from 11 to 1.